Hi guys, my name is David with MediaUnlock.net and uh, we're going to be looking at a certain workflow needed to do time-lapse photography photos. Now before we dive right into the, the workflow and the software we're going to be using, I do want to mention that anybody shooting a time-lapse sequence out there, please always shoot on RAW and you'll learn more throughout this tutorial and understand why RAW is so important to be shooting. And uh, make sure your card's big enough so it can hold a minimum of 400 images when you do a time-lapse. Now we will be doing tutorials on actual in-the-field time-lapse stuff um, on another day, of course. But today I'm going to be showing you how to use a program called LR Time-lapse. Um, and uh, of course Lightroom and both those programs work together to make a pretty amazing time-lapse so uh, here's the actual website there'll be a description down below so you guys can actually go download the free version of the software which allows you to edit up to uh, 400 images and I think the output is 720p or 1080p um, a guy and this gentleman right down here and we'll scroll down so you guys can see him. this guy right here his name is Gunther he's from Germany and he's the one that actually came up with this software he's a professional time-lapse shooter and uh, his time lapses are just amazing you can check him out on his website and he uses this software that he invented to get it done so if you want to download it, of course, you can go to uh, download right here and download the free version, which will get you started and you'll be able to follow along with me. Um, and of course, I will upload all of these photos for a download. So in the description bar down below, there'll be a way to download my whole entire time lapse sequence. So if you want to go download that right now and follow me along, then you're welcome to use my photos that I've taken so you can follow along and get some practice in. I don't have a problem with that at all. So that will be also. So there'll be a link to the website as well as a link to uh, some photos, the, my sequence that we're going to edit today. You can follow along and edit it just the same uh, as I have. Um, as well, he has uh, Gunther, the guy that put this uh, LR time-lapse software together. He actually put together um, an ebook that has really helped me immensely in learning time-lapse photography and really understand it and get high-quality time-lapses. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is open up LR Time Lapse. So we're going to downsize this and we're going to go open up our software here. And it's going to take a second. So it says I need to do an upgrade. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. I'll do that later. And what we need to do is we need to go find the time lapse. Now I have it over here. We have our tree kind of, you know, you go through and find out where it's at. Now I do highly suggest that you take your time lapses off your SD card or CF card and throw it in a folder. I've got it underneath uh, barn part one and I've got it under raw. So, um, and there you go. Boom. All my CR2s or raw files are going to be right there. And that's where you want to put it is in a separate folder off, outside of your SD or CF card if you are in a situation to do so. Uh, now if you notice the uh, white versus gray here, these white mean that this is a time lapse that can be read by the software, or at least it notices a sequence of photos. So what we want to actually do, and I don't even think we're in the right hard drive here, we actually want to go to our time lapse hard drive. I have a, I have a hard drive dedicated just for time lapses. Media unlocked, um, time lapses, and then we're going to work on the barn down here. And there's my raw folder with all 812 photos. And what it's doing right now is it's making XMP files. So what we'll do is we'll jump into this folder so you guys can actually see this happening as it's being done. Um, and it's going to take a second. Okay, so it's not actually going to put the XMP files in the folder until after I tell it to, which I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. So what XMP files are is they're mainly uh, files that contain metadata information that will be used in Lightroom and then back to LR time lapse and back to Lightroom then back to LR time lapse. Um, so mainly the two softwares talk to each other with this information contained within a file system um, that is connected to each individual photo. So, um, but I believe I have to hit the save button down here before you guys will actually be able to see that they're in here and, uh, and I'll show you guys that when it's happening. So what we're going to do first is initialize the sequence. So it's going to go through and initialize it as well as if you notice, I have this blue line right here and that's letting me know my exposures where they dip, you know, like right here, it's saying that it's probably pretty dark, this part of the sequence. So let's just scroll out to that part of the sequence and look at that. Look how dark this part of the sequence is. And that's why you see that exposure dip. Um, but then if we go all the way over to here, oh, look how bright this sequence is. And if you ever want to get a full screen of this, you just hit this guy 
boom, you've got a full screen. Um, and you can still do your basic stuff right here. It's all right right here. Um, but we'll go we'll send this back here in a second. You can turn this on and off, so your initializing line and your exposure line. Um, you can turn that off and just see this if you wanted to. Um, you can turn out the crop mark that they kind of have set in here. And uh, actually, I really don't need that on. And so if we turn this off, we can actually look at our time lapse unedited. Now you will never be able to watch the edited version um, here in the software. You'll have to wait to render it out to, f to see the fully edited version. Um, and the reason is, is that it takes up a lot of extra editing and time and uh, RAM and everything else. So you'll learn that your workflow is much faster in the way that I'm going to show you today. It's really the only way to do it. And uh, the workflow will work faster in that aspect, um, not being able to see the fully edited version because, again, it would really kind of bog down your computer to a certain extent, especially if you're editing a 4 or 6K uh, time lapse sequence. So it would just be very difficult. So once we've done that, we want to go on. I'm going to go on and put this back in here. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to hit our keyframes. Now, I think I've got mine set up to five keyframes, and uh, we need to actually turn... Yes, back on here. And I have, uh, as you can see, five keyframes set up. We're just going to work with three keyframes today. So I'm going to switch this to a three, three keyframe system. And now it's the keyframes of one at the beginning, one roughly at the middle, and one at the end. And these keyframes are going to be the ones that we're going to edit, and then they're going to talk to the rest of the photos with the software and uh, properly expose everything or get the exposures where you want them at. Um, so before we hit the save, actually we could go on and hit save. So we're going to go on and hit save, and now it's going to save all that XMP metadata information like I was talking about earlier. And we should actually be able to see it now. There they are. See, all the, each one of these files is connected to a raw file up here, and that will contain information that both pieces of software need to read to be able to make this sequence or workflow um, work. And I'm hopefully I'm not going too in depth here, guys, because I really want to try to do the best I can to really explain to you guys what I'm doing and why it's being done so that it maybe makes more sense if you ever get lost. So once you've done that, uh, we would open up Lightroom, but I want to dive into a few things before we dive right into Lightroom and really start our editing. Um, you have the deflicker option, so if you get flicker in your uh, sequence, um, flicker is caused mostly by aperture. And we'll talk about that again. That'll be another tutorial another day. Um, but you do have the option to help deflicker or pretty much neutralize the flicker within your time lapse sequence. And then you have what's called the Holy Grail effect. Uh, this effect is awesome and so much fun. And what it allows you to do is shoot from the morning to the day or from the day to the night. So night to day, day to night. And it allows you to do a nice, comfortable transition using this system. As you can see, we've got three lines of back and forth. So pretty much every line is a back and forth between so you finish this line, you go to Lightroom. You finish this line, you go back to Lightroom. Um, so this one, you would hit Lightroom up a couple of different times. Um, but today, we're just doing the basic workflow. So we're going to downsize this. We're going to open up Lightroom. And give me a second. It shouldn't take too long. And then we want to import this sequence. Um, I guess I need to update this as well. And we'll just hit remind me later. Uh, we're going to go to import. And hopefully I've already got my file system kind of set up. Um, I have to go find it. I can't remember. Yeah. So time lapse. I guess I won't have to go find it. I know exactly where it's at. Just got to go open up the right folders, barn. And then we want to open up the raw folder within that, within that folder system. Um, so then we just want to import all these photos. And I've got everything set over here how I want them. So if you guys see this, you can just multiply that. And we're going to hit import. And now it's going to import that whole entire sequence. And uh, let's go on and do that. And it will take a second. So mainly what it's doing now is it's reading uh, the XMP and metadata information from those files. And uh, really, it's only three files that need to worry about. And those are our three keyframes that we set up over in LR time lapse here, these blue diamonds right here. And actually, for you guys, so you guys can really see blue diamonds. And I would usually probably add in two more keyframes, um, We or at least one more because of the dip here. This dip, I would try to help uh, fix it with an extra keyframe. But we're not going to do that. It's not that big of a deal. This is a brief, maybe half of a second to a second to two seconds of actual footage right here. So it's not like it's going to kill the time lapse sequence. Um, edit once it's 
fully rendered out. So it's not going to really be that big of a deal. So everything looks like it's about imported. We're importing the last couple files and wait for that to finish. And then we're going to switch. Okay. So now we can go down here. We want to go to, we want to, if the filters are off, that's fine. You could have the LRs full sequence, but right now what we want to look at is our LRT all keyframes. So it's going to bring up my three keyframes and let's take a look at them. There's one middle one and the last one. So as you can see, we have a major, not major, but fairly big light changes, right? So we want those. For me, I want those lights. You have two, kind of two options. I can have the light set up to gradually get brighter and brighter over time or darker, I guess, if I really wanted to um, with this system. Or I could try to get it as evenly exposed across three photos. And that's my objective is to make all three photos look very similar so that you have a nice motion, um, very, very comfortable, smooth time lapse once it's rendered out into a video file or into a motion picture file. Um, so let's just do a little editing. We're not going to dive into anything too deep, you know, so um, looks like my computer's thinking for a second here. Uh, so I probably want to bring down my, I don't know, I kind of like the warmth, but it's a little too warm for me. So let's bring that down just a tad bit. And now we want to bring our exposure up a tad bit, brighten her up. Uh, we'll bring our highlights down. We really want to see those clouds. There isn't the cloud density was not that great that day, so uh, it, it, this would look much better if there's more clouds rolling through. This was shot at a 10 second interval as well. Uh, we can bring our shadows up, but don't want to, you don't want to bring your shadows up too much uh, due to the fact that you could get um, some serious noise. As you can see, look at my histogram up here. You can see where. I'm kind of peaking, which is my darker mid-tones. Um, and so keep an eye on your histogram because your histogram will help you with the other two photos as well when you're editing them, getting an idea. So maybe I want to send a little white back here and we could darken it up. You see how it's peaking when I darken it up? So I don't want to do that. All right, so now maybe we want to push some clarity. That helped out with some of the peaking a little bit. And I actually want to bring it down. Just, I don't want to. I don't want to over clarify it. And then I really want these this moss to pop on this on this bar a little bit more. So let's bring in some vibrancy, and we could bring up some contrast. And maybe not. No, we'll bring a little bit of contrast into the shot. So uh, we got a little bit of peaking up here, but uh, again, it's not it's not serious. So um, I'm not too worried about it. So I, I like this shot for a quick edit. This is, this is pretty comfortable for me. Um, you can use your tonal curve if you want. You can use your gradient filters as well. Those are very helpful many a time. Um, you can do sharpening. You can do your highlights and shadows and stuff down here underneath your, your tonal curve. Um, and, uh, and you can work with some luminance if you want. You know, so you could play around with that if you'd feel the need to. So not every setting, but just about cropping all your major settings in Lightroom will transfer over to LR time lapse and it will do its thing. So we're finished with that. We want to right click. We want to copy these settings. If you did some cropping, you want to add cropping. And unless you're doing Holy Grail, you're going to make sure the exposure is clicked if you exchange the exposure at all. So copy it and let's go to our next picture. We'll go to settings, right click, or control, uh, control V, or control, yeah, control V. So you could, we're just going to do right click, copy settings, right click, paste settings on the next one. So let's bounce back and forth. So if you notice, the whites in this are more prevalent as well as if you look like here, and then we jump over to the previous one, look at the difference in color tone. So that means this one needs to be a tad bit warmer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up our temperature. And we're close, we need to go up a tad bit more. And that's pretty close, so the temperatures are going to be pretty good. Now we need to look at lighting. So we could go up here and we could get an idea of what the lighting looks like between the two. If you notice, the second picture is going to be a little bit brighter, so I want to bring that exposure down. 
not too much just a little bit and let's see here so that doesn't look too bad so now let's go back to full picture and let's bounce between the two and that's fairly even um, the greens look a little bit greener in this picture than they do here but again the, sh the clouds and the way the sun is that will throw some things off I'm pretty comfortable with this the transition between these two so right click on the second photo and one thing I probably should have mentioned earlier if you notice these photos and we'll go back into library real quick before we go into the third edit of the photo um, you have these stars. These one stars are your basic photography workflow in LR time lapse, and those are your keyframes. Just to mention, if you guys didn't already figure that out, I should have mentioned that right when I brought them in. Okay, so um, we'll just make sure we'll right click and copy these settings once more just to make sure we got the right settings. Yes, copy. And let's go back to paste settings. And wow, this looks. The greens are going to need to be more greenish, and we're going to need to put some exposure down and some warmth. So, uh, let's go and get our warmth where we want it. And the warmth, actually, when you really look at the wood, is not that much different. So, what we might need to do is just bring down the exposure a tad bit. That actually looks pretty close. Let's go back out and see how it looks. We we still got to bring our exposure down quite a bit. So there we go. That looks pretty pretty comfortable. The greens look pretty similar. And now let's jump to the verse photo. Um, again, the sun was hitting it. I think right here. So it was as a, this is the sun rising. The sun was going up and over. The, the barn if I remember correctly so there are going to be some light changes and for, for the most part these three photos I'm comfortable with so our next thing to do is hit control A where you're going to highlight all three keyframes you're going to right click on it you're going to go to metadata and what you're going to do is you're going to save that metadata information so these three photos all have the color correction information in them and they're being saved into the XMP files which we'll go back over here they're being saved into this folder of these XMPs and those three, and now what we're going to do is we're going to pull Lightroom back up, or LR time lapse, not Lightroom, but the LR time lapse software. And we're going to hit reload, and make sure it's still it's still clicked on the raw folder, the one that you originally did. So um, it's about to add in information to all of these. When I hit auto transition, it's going to auto transition everything. So let me go on and hit it so you guys can watch it. And if you see, it auto transitioned the white balance, the exposure, all the way down. So they, they changed little bit by little bit. So it has a nice smooth transition in lighting and it doesn't look like there's like a major jump from one to the other. So again, what we'll do is we'll go save. And now it's going to save again the auto transition because it just it took the information off those three keyframes and transitioned it in between each keyframe. The photos and it used that that information to properly transition it in the LR time lapse or so you don't have to do that in Lightroom and do it from photo to photo or a small batch of 10 photos or 15 photos however big of a amount of photos are in between major light changes and it just did it for you so we hit saved and now we're gonna go back and what we want to do is we want to switch over to the full sequence and filters so once we've done that we're gonna control a again we want to highlight everything now all of these photos have metadata information in those XMP files that, uh, that we just saved. So now we can actually read those files. And you're going to see the pictures change. So let's just pick a random picture down here. So this is what the original picture looked like on this sequence. And as if you guys notice up here, it's reading the XMP metadata information, right? You're going to see this file change colors, and it's going to do that because LR time lapse already did the color change, and I'm just reading that information off those XMP files out of that folder. And there you go. As you notice, if you notice down here, all these files are changing. Um, we can go back to library. We can hit this, and you see all these files are just changing, and it's going through and reading them and changing them. And then we will export out of here. 
And once we've done that, we will be able to send back to LR time lapse where we will render the motion picture out and we'll be able to watch it. Um, and of course, we'll add in the actual time lapse at the end of this video. So um, once this is finished, the next step is going to take quite a while. It'll probably take about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to go through. So task complete. So we want to right click. And what we want to do is we want to export. So we want to make sure we hit Control A, we have all the files highlighted. Hit export. We want to go down to time lapse. Now you're going to have a few different settings than what I do because I have the pro version versus anybody that gets the free version. I'm going to be doing 4K, 8-bit uh, files um, as well. I need to pick an output fat path. So I'm going to go do that right now. And we'll call the output path We'll call it YouTube, YT, YouTube, select, and that's the file. So they're going to send all these JPEGs into that file. And then you could have preset set up in LR time lapse. So the second this finishes exporting all these files with all this new color correction on these um, pictures, it would automatically go straight into rendering. But I want to show you guys the rendering settings and explain them a little bit to you. So we're going to leave that unchecked. And then you do have some information down here that can explain some stuff um, and all that. And it's pretty much just talking about what I'm going to show you guys when this is finished exporting out. So we're going to hit export. And now uh, Lightroom will prepare it. And now it's going to export all 812 photos into the folder. And that will set it up to be finally rendered out in LR time lapse and make yourself your time-lapse sequence motion picture. So this will take about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, so I'll be back when this is finished and we'll go over step two, which will be the uh, rendering of the video and in step three, talking a little bit about the video and its playback and all that. Once Lightroom has exported all the uh, files into JPEG, a temporary file pretty much, to make the motion picture or the time-lapse video, it will pop up and show this screen. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to downsize this. And we'll downsize this. And we'll open up LR time lapse software. And this will pop right up. So this is, the, uh, this is where it's reading it from. This is the uh, output file right here. Uh, you have MP4 or ProRes, I think, in the free version. It's only MP4. And I think you can only get up to 720p or 1080p in the free version. I'm going to do 4K. And I think you only have up to medium or high, where I'm going to do very high and then a 420 pixel format. As well as I got the sharpening going, and I could set up those default settings that I talked about earlier. As well, I delete all temporary files. And what that means is, is that Lightroom has made temporary files so that LR time lapse could read it and turn it into a video, pretty much. So let me pull those files up and show them to you. And YouTube and then in here and there they all are so mainly what's going to happen is all these files will be gone they will be deleted and just the video will be left over um, once the render has has completed so uh, I'm gonna have those deleted you could keep them if you wanted to I just go on and delete them I have no reason to keep them so we're gonna hit render video and if you guys can see down here and I'll move it up and now kind of out of the way so you guys can kind of see it a little bit down here it's going to render the files, all 812 of them, and then once that's finished we will talk a little bit about a few other things and we will be done here. The render has now finished with LR time lapse. As you can see I don't have a dialog down here. And if we pop into the folder that had all the JPEGs in it earlier, now it's just a file. So we will attempt to play the file, but it probably will not play due to the fact of the 4K high resolution it will as you can see it's kind of frozen if you throw it into your editor though you shouldn't have any issues and of course we'll throw this video at the end of the video at the end of this video uh, you'll be able to watch it and like I said there'll be a, a link down below so you can actually download all these files and use them and uh, follow along um, you'll only be able to use 400 of the files out of the 812 though if you don't have the pro version and of course all those temporary files are gone um, as well, we did make one of these for a Mac, so it's pretty much the same process, but any Mac users out there, there'll be a link down below, and as well, I'll pop one up right now. So you guys have a wonderful day. Check us out on MediaUnlocked.net and uh, Facebook at David D. Images and, of course, Twitter at Media Unlocked. If you have any questions or messages, send them to me or leave me a comment. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later.